name is Ava Geierstunker. I'm a leader of Classic Free Gen Z, a youth-led classic awareness campaign, and I'm here with Amber. Hi, my name is Amber Chen. I'm the founder of the Environmental Justice Educational Campaign, Anti-Racist Planet. And welcome to the Classic Pollution Coalition Youth Ambassador Countdown to COP26. Classic Pollution Coalition is a growing global alliance of more than 1,200 organizations, businesses, and thought leaders in 75 different countries, working toward a just, equitable world free of plastic pollution and its toxic impacts on humans, animals, waterways, the ocean, and the environment. Today, we have the privilege of interviewing activist Jackie Nunez as a part of Plastic Pollution Coalition's COP26 campaign. Jackie is the founder of The Last Plastic Straw, a Plastic Pollution Coalition project that is dedicated to making plastic straws a thing of the past. Thank you so much for being here, Jackie, and let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So our first question is, why did you start your activism with a focus on plastic straws? I chose the uh, plastic straws because at the time I was very frustrated by the problem and I was really wanting to uh, go to the source of it and but I wasn't sure where to start and when I I volunteered for beach cleanups but for me it was the, the analogy of the tap you know like you you want to turn off the tap if if, if your uh, tub is overflowing you turn it off so I really wanted to go to the source um, and I was volunteering for beach cleanups and learning a lot about the problem um, but I was overwhelmed by it. So it wasn't until I started cleaning up a lot and seeing a lot of plastic straws. And I just started just intuitively asking for the straw. Um, and then at one point I just really got, you know, fed up by it and I wanted to, uh, figure out a way. And I got served a plastic straw in a, in a water glass. And that was for some reason, that was it. That was my last plastic straw moment. I, I live in Santa Cruz, California, overlooking the Monterey Bay Ring Sanctuary. And that was the you know, the last straw for me, literally my last plastic straw. And um, I really was inspired because I got the idea about um, doing it upon request um, because we had the, the Water's Precious campaign in California, we had the drought going on. And so they were serving at the time, serving water upon request. And that's when the light bulb went off for me. I'm like, that's it. If the least someone can do is just have straws upon request, then that would be nothing off the restaurant's back. It would be a, a great awareness tool. And I saw the reactions of my friends when I really started beyond just me asking for a straw, but talking about it, getting my friends to, hey, you know, we're going out, but why don't I want anyone to order straw? I got straws for you. And I just started seeing the, the power of the plastic straw to be what I, I call the gateway issue because you wouldn't stop at just straws when you start really looking at that because it was literally in front of our noses. And to me, it was the poster child of useless seeing these plastic for most people that we had this disconnect and we were in front, but we weren't, we were accepting it when we go out, but we really didn't have straws at home. Um, so this was a great, uh, I thought, thought a great um, segue into the, the broader picture and how far we've become removed and so used to seeing plastics. So that was kind of my aha moment. And, and that was kind of around 2010, 2011. And I really became more active, created a um, a Facebook page and everything. So yeah, that's how I got the idea. And I was volunteering for uh, Save Our Shores at the time with a, a local nonprofit and um, did their sanctuary tour, uh, training program. And you owe them 50 hours of, of volunteer work. And that's when I said, can, I, can this be it? Can this be my, my, my project? And it, it kind of grew from there, so. Yes, and I think that kind of leads into our next question that we prepared, which was about single-use plastic straws leading into the larger plastic free movement. So my question is now, like when you're talking about, you know, upon request having straws, are you interested in also the upon request plastic utensils and applying that to like the broader range of single-use plastic? Yeah, it's been a great segue for a lot of policy. And, and, um, and, and one thing I wanted to say, too, is now I'm the advocacy a program manager for Plastic Pollution Coalition as well. So it's been it's this natural progression of not just plastic straws, which is still kind of my baby project, um, but I'm also working expanding into all single use plastics. And it's, it's been the natural because, you know, what we're finding is a lot of people start with plastic straws. And so even if you start a policy talking about plastic straws, you quickly uh, like people are like, well, wait a minute, what about that, that single use utensil? What about that water bottle, whatever? And it starts that conversation. Um, and my whole premise was that, you know, no one sets out to pollute the planet with just not aware, right? 
And, um, and I felt that people were just as overwhelmed as I was. So I just felt like this was an, an easy segue. And I also felt with policy, you were finding a lot of like politicians that normally weren't really like for the environment and doing stuff, but it was just such a trend. And they were like, yeah, this is really wasteful. This would be nothing off my back. I can stick my neck out and say, yeah, let's do a single use, you know, and it, and upon request was just really, was not really a ban. It's just like not giving out. It was a win-win. Uh, but it was the, the segue into the broader comprehensive ordinances. It always kind of started with the straw, but then it wouldn't end there. Um, so really it was great. And it was always kind of my hunch that that would be kind of how it went. And um, there is a, a field of study um, from BJ Fogg in Stanford about little habits lead to big habits. And it was around um, diabetes and heart disease. And so it kind of, you know, it kind of proved that. So um, yeah, anyway, so that was, that was how it, it, it grew from there. And so it, now I call it the key to the door. The door is open. Everyone's in the room talking about um, plastic. And, um, and I just feel like now my, my work has really you know, just begun. Like it's really, uh, now it's like the systems change that needs to happen and all the stuff that needs to change you know, within our whole system to how we've gone from like this disposable culture into more of a, a reuse, um, conservation of resources type of a culture. And what I also found too, is that it, the, the plastic straws are indicative. It's like, it, it's like wants versus needs, you know? So it really kind of brought that up, uh, kind of like that uh, adage, like, you know, paper or plastic when you go to the, the store or whatever, but made people really think about it. Do I really want this or do I really need it? And so for people who need it, it's there for people who need it, but for the people who want it or maybe didn't think about it, I guess. And so it really kind of gets that conversation going in your own head, like, oh, is this something that I can get rid of? Um, so it was a great segue to that. So our next question is, how do we move away from sort of like warring language that has popped up in movements and why is this important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really important for me uh, with warring language. Um, and I, I talk a lot to students, to, to kids, and it's really important. Uh, one of the things that I always say, like, this is not a revolution. This is an evolution of the species, right? So for us to really get past this, we need to evolve as, as a you know, humankind, human species, so that we get past this, this wasteful type of culture. Um, and, and with that is, you know, it, you want to get away from what we call conquest activism because you're perpetuating the same thing that's that's kind of created this this whole mess right so it's you know when you fight it's got the notion that you know there's winners and losers and someone's you know someone's gonna win someone's gonna lose but no we all win we all can work together towards this so i'm very conscious about that warring language i know for you know there, there are certain people that it is literally a fight every day for their lives right people living in cancer alley people with you know it, um really affected by the effects of the plastic production and the pollution that's um you know that, that's created because of it so i want to be very conscious of that as well but all in all it's really even for that it's just like we really need to evolve past this this language because it's not us versus them it's, it's going to take all of us because this is really a big system shift so um, i try to stay away from a lot of negative and warring language and think more about forward thinking and positive into what we want, create the, the future we want to see. So that's my challenge is to work with not only being able to uh, talk about the problem, but talk about future solutions and, and work towards that, put our energy towards that. Speaking of solutions, what, what other types of straws do you suggest in, instead of using like a single use plastic straw, or would you even say that it's better just not use straws at all? Well, it's really, you know, up to you. And, and like I said, it, it, it does come down to wants versus needs. So it's not for me to say what's the best straw. Of course, I'm, I'm always saying that I am not for um, plastic straw bands, or I mean, plat, uh, straw bands, I'm for, you know, reduction of single use plastic. And if that, so it doesn't matter what, what that's molded into, right? So if it happens to be straw, it really comes down to is a plastic straw the only thing that you could use if you really need, want, like, it's not for me to say, I, I'm not gonna isolate anyone or make anyone feel bad who actually re relies on this. Um, but there's a lot of great materials. Like when I come to other, like right now I'm in Puerto Rico, right? So like working with what's in your, you know, in your space, in your place. So you could replace it if you wanna do single use and something that's truly single use that you could, 
actually multiple uses as well would be uh, bamboo. So you could use bamboo and, um, and it would, you know, in the life of that, it would just compost and be part of, you know, our, our environment. Um, another thing in, 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 uh, in tropical, I was gonna say Puerto Rico, but any, any tropical place that can grow papaya, I don't know if you guys know, but papaya leaf stems, you can cut and they're, they're hollow. So you can probably get a, you know, a couple, you know, two to three straws and it looks really great in a, in a, in a coconut. So it's a truly like you're going native and it's, it's going to all compost instead of putting that plastic straw in a coconut. It just looks so bad. Um, and then if you want to do more of a durable, reusable stainless steel, a lot of people like glass, my partner broke her jaw. Um, and when I first started, uh, with this movement and she really liked glass and I actually, my nephew, uh, had some jaw surgery and was wired shut and likes the glass straw too because it's nice and it feels good. You can clean it, you can see it. Um, and it feels good on your lips. So there's a lot of different, it's just preference. Um, but again, it's, you know, wants versus needs. If it's really needed, it's, it's still all resources. So even when people say, oh, what about paper? Yeah, like, yeah, paper, you know, would be in the waste end, it would just dissolve and become soil or, you know, whatever it would it blend. But not if it's lined with plastic chemicals, not with it, you know, there's a lot of different things that come into play. And again, paper still trees. So at the end of the day, you know, we really want to think about how we're using our resources and do it wisely. Um, so what are some feasible commitments that you'd like to see come out of COP26? Oh man. Um, definitely the, um, the uh, plastics pack or plastics treaty, if we can all agree on something like that would be amazing. Um, and the glaring thing is that, and also why I chose it, cause I travel a lot and I go to all, all these other places. So a lot of times like, ah, like you go to, you know, Bali or whatever, and you see all this plastic stress, but you realize that a lot of it stems from home. And so, you know, you gotta clean up your own house before you can clean up anyone else's. And that's the big glaring thing for us living in the US is that the US is just behind and not, you know, the one that really needs to move on this. We're one of the biggest exporters of plastic waste, right? So that is, that is huge. If we can really um, halt our exports of our plastic waste and really control and, and, you know, clean up our own mess in our own, in our own uh, country would be huge. We are such a, an impact on the rest of the world, right? And, um, and what we do reverberates throughout. And a lot of these industries actually you know, come are US led and a lot of this marketing, you know, this, this, this lifestyle, even marketing to get to um, this disposable lifestyle is being exported throughout the world. So I think that's one of the biggest um, things. And I also want to see more of the, um, the climate commitments, you know, to have us be on board with that, because as you know, plastics and climate go hand in hand. I mean, plastics is a gross polluter at every stage of its existence. You know, it contributes to climate change from extraction to waste. And so um, really to see those conversations merge um, into our commitments for the environment will be really exciting for me. And what's exciting for me is as youth get involved, even with Fridays for the Future, whatever thing, before we even started trying to push that narrative or get uh, people on board about, you know, connecting climate to plastics, kids were doing that already. You know, when they were out there Fridays for the Future, they were, they were connecting those dots to the fossil fuels and knowing that, you know, 99.8% of all plastic is made from fossil fuels, right? So they've already made those commitments and those, those connections and, um, and able to push that forward. What has happened with a lot of us adults, we've been marketed to, right? I call it bad habits. And um, we've had a whole lifetime of this push, push, push of, of convenience and all of this kind of um, living. And it's kind of gotten insane. And in your lifetimes, actually in the last 15 years, um, half of all the plastic that's ever been made has been made in the last 15 years. So you see this ex you know, exponential growth on, um, and it's just got to stop. It's just, you know, we really need to make some big commitments and, and back it with action. So I'm excited that you guys are getting involved and that there's um, a lot of voices that are working towards the same goal with different areas and coming at it, you know.
Our last question for today okay. is about your experience as a river guide. So mm -hmm. you consider yourself an urban packer, which I think yeah. is really cool. So mm -hmm. would you mind um, maybe describing to us what that means to be an urban packer? And then also what is in an urban packer's kit? So okay. this kind of like leads on to a broader question of how people on a day-to-day -day basis can make sustainable choices without sacrificing like, you know, economic burdens and like dealing with that mm -hmm. kind of yeah. extra stuff. So, yeah, I mean, when I started river guiding this, one of the things is that you have that notion of pack and then pack it out, right? You're going, what I loved, what I fell in love with, with river guiding wasn't necessarily like the big rapids or anything. It was being able to, to transport yourself on this beautiful river to these other locations, basically untouched. And the only way to get there is by river, right? So that was really beautiful to me and really great, but it was really a bummer when it was trashed. Um, and so we really had a big, um, ethic about, you know, cleaning up not only our own mess and bringing it on the boat back, but also cleaning up other messes while we're out there. Um, but the other thing is, too, is you have to be pretty self-sufficient, right? You got to you got to bring everything. And I kind of take that into my life. Anytime I travel, um, I have everything in my bag. And so if I if I want to walk the talk, I do. I'm a geek. I will I will carry, um, you know, my my own water bottle. Um, sometimes I have I'll have some cups in there. And I usually bring like two of everything because I don't want to eat alone and I don't want my friends to go with that. We go to eat something. So um, one of the notions, I mean, I do have like the foldable spork and all, and all that stuff because I'm in, we get all this swag when you're working in this, you know, there's a lot of companies that really want to get involved and they come up with some really great innovative things. I got this great foldable spork, but at the same time, it's another thing is like, I joke around, like maybe my next campaign should be um, stick a fork in it. Like just put a, Get a fork from home and throw it in your bag. What would that take? Put it in your back pocket. You know, those, those single-use, uh, you know, cutlery is just insane, plastic. Um, so I created this whole, like, urban backpacker aesthetic, and I joke around my friends because I just start pulling stuff out. And, you know, but it doesn't have to be all this gear, right? So, like I said, you can just bring a fork from home. I got titanium uh, plates that I got from backpacking that I was going to throw back in my backpacking box. But then I thought, hey, these are light. I can slide it in my computer bag and they stack really flat. So I have two of them. And um, so I bring those, I whip those out and we do like food truck events, whatever. And I'm like, here. Um, and I have uh, like a napkin or whatever, but that napkin could be like, you know, a bandana, right? It doesn't have to be a, a cloth napkin that, that could get special. Um, I can also, there's a lot I could do with the, with the mason jar. Like I love using a mason jar. Actually, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, spill, you know, you, that, that really gets a nice seal. If you can uh, get your favorite socks, I, I get all these holes in my favorite socks and I just love like the stripes or whatever. So you can just cut them and use the top part. And that's your um, insulation, like your little koozie on your jar and you can do hot and cold in, in a jar and, and actually protect it as well. And it looks cool. Like it's just so great and and you can bring that around so it doesn't have to be like this the special you know stainless steel kind of special thing so that's where I, I get my my urban packer thing and I and I kind of lead by example and bring it out and so people really um comment to me about that but I really learned a lot of that from just my travels and being a lot, a lot more self-sufficient you know I, I kind of nerd out too like I go beyond that I'll have like a a, a life straw and um, it's a filtered straw. So if I go to some of these countries um, and the, the water is questionable or you can literally with that live straw go right out of a, a stream or creek and drink that and it's, it's filtered of all the bacteria and everything like that. So I do kind of take it to the nth degree. But, um, and here in Puerto Rico with the lights going out all the time, the other thing I do is I bring one of those, uh, those collapsible uh, uh, solar lights and that's been handy. Because the lights go out, whatever, you just pop that thing up, you put it, and you've got light, you know, LED lights. And so those are the kind of things that you can just clip on your bag and, and bring it. So I'm certainly an urban packer no matter where I go. Um, but those are some of the fun things that, that we do. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, Jackie, thank you so much for talking with us today okay. and sharing your work and your right. perspective. Um, we're super honored to have had the opportunity to speak with you, and we look forward to creating a more just and equitable world with you. Thank you. I look forward to doing that with you, too. Love what you guys are doing. Thank you.